Whoa. They always look like that? Does it always look like that? I'm sorry. Okay, good. Is this thing on? All right. Turn your Bibles to the book of Romans. We're going to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14, we'll be looking at verse number 12. It says, So then, every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Go ahead and open in prayer real quick. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for giving me an opportunity to preach here. Um, my church family, I thank you for them. I thank you for my pastor. I pray that you just bless, the, uh, bless him with the wisdom as he's guiding our church. Help me to say only what you'd have me to say and nothing more. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to give an account of ourselves. No, uh, we use this a lot for talking to lost people. We're going to give an account of ourselves to God for what we did with our life, whether uh, we accepted his son or whether we rejected him. We're going to give an account as saved people as to how we spent our time and, how, and what we did with the truth that the Lord gave us. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, he gave us truth. Uh, the Bible says um, that Jesus is truth. Okay? Uh, what, what did we do with him? We accepted him. That's great. But are we hoarding him for ourselves, or are we going out and sharing him with others? Let's look over in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14. We've heard this is the uh, parable of the talents here. Uh, Matthew 25, verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. And then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one, went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had, had, re and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He said, uh, he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou wert an hard man, and uh, Lord, thou art an hard man. Reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid my talent, and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. So here we see that we, um, the Lord's getting ready to take a, a trip into a far country. He's going to deliver his goods, his, his, uh, his money, to his servants to, to manage for him, to take care of for him, to try and... and and uh, make money off of it, so to speak. But we, we see here, um, we can compare this to ourselves. We may not have the five talents that, say, uh, other people in the church have. We may not have as much um, knowledge, as much experience with the things of the Lord, but the Lord will take the experience that we have, and he'll use that if we offer it to him. If we go out and try and grow that, go out and try and... Uh, make that to grow, then the Lord will, will multiply that, and he'll give us more experience. And 
the Lord won't give us anything more if we're not using what we've already got for him. We see here in verse 26, it's where the one that had only received the one talent went and hid his. It says, and uh, 26, his Lord answered, excuse me, verse 24. And he which had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. We, we see here that he's accusing the Lord of being unjust. Well, the Lord's given you everything that you've got. It's okay if the Lord asks for something back. I mean, he, he's given you life. He's given you hope and truth uh, to, go, to go out and to share that with others, which is what he commands us to do in Mark 16, 15. That's not unjust. I mean, he's given us life eternal. Like, like we were, the pastor was saying earlier, he's died for us. The least we can do is live for him. I mean, I mean, come on, it's our reasonable service. We need to go out and share the truth of the Lord with others. We need to pass out tracts when we're out uh, doing, doing things. Uh, as far as th applying this to things uh, that are uh, tangible, we, can, we see that uh, the, the Lord will, will give us things and they went out and they used these five, these five talents to go in and to work with those and to gain more, right? So when the Lord gives us something, he may not give it to us just for us to keep and hold on to, like the, one, like the man with one talent did. He went and hid it in the earth, went and hid it there so that it wouldn't get destroyed or didn't have any risk involved with it. But, but what we need to do is take what the Lord's given us and go work with it and use it for his glory. I mean, he's given... He's given you a car. I know a lot of people here let the missionaries use their vehicles. I mean, how often is it the missionary uses your vehicles and then you get it back and it breaks down? Not very often. Usually when you use your vehicles for the Lord's service, use your things for the Lord's service, it's going to last longer. You, the Lord will give through you what he won't give to you necessarily. It says he gave the, the one two talents, and he went out and worked with his two talents and got back two more. He may not have the same two talents he had originally, but overall he's got, he's got more. He's got better than he had when he started. We, we may not have much to offer the Lord, like I said, but when we give what we have to the Lord, he's going to use it uh, for, for him. We've heard the song, little is much when God is in it. And that's true, little is much when God is in it. But a lot is nothing when God's not in it. We need, we need to just kind of, kind of think about that. It's something I thought was pretty good. You may not, but I mean, I did. Anyways, um, let's see here. Look over in Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33. Kind of funny, Jesse, I've got a little bit of your outline already in here. It's neat how the Lord will direct things before you even get up to go do something. Like Brother Wright was saying earlier during testimony time, uh, I've had this sermon written for about a week now, and then Jesse comes up and preaches part of it, so that's, that's great. Anyways, we see, it's not, uh, no hard feelings. Anyways, it says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked for, that lacked for as many as were possessors of lands or houses, sold them and, and brought the pieces or about the prices of the things that were sold, and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And a distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who was by the apostles surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. When we'll, when we'll give what we have to the Lord, the Lord's going to make more out of it. Like I said, we may not have much, but the Lord will take that. We, We've heard illustrations with tithing and, and things like that. When, when you don't have much, that's when you need to give. The principle of, of giving and receiving is in here. It's the Lord's promise that if you give to him, he's going to give you more than what you had originally. So why not, why not test the waters and see if God will make good on that? He will, because he can't lie. God is, God is truth, and he'll, he'll do what he said he's going to do. What we have, God gave to us. That's just common knowledge. Uh, we need to use it for for what he wants us to do. When we give someone a gift, we don't want somebody to abuse it and not use it. I mean, if somebody, uh, I've had a couple people give me different books. I, I'll go and read those. I don't just go and set them on the bookshelf and let them collect dust 
I mean, when, when you give somebody a gift, you accept them to use it responsibly and not to abuse it. The Lord's given us his son. What are we doing with him? Are we, are we just using him as kind of a, uh, kind of a, a get-out-of-jail-free card whenever we have an issue? Are we, do we, do we take our, our problems to the Lord when they get so big we can't handle them on our own? Or are we, are we using Jesus for what, for what, or using what he's done for us uh, for what it was intended? Are we calling on his name whenever we, we need, whenever we uh, are getting ready to do something even small? We need to pray and ask the Lord for his blessing on things. Um, we need to go and, and share his salvation with others. God's given us salvation. What are we doing with that? Are we just sitting on it? Are we just using our salvation as a status symbol? Uh, are we using that as to come to church and not have to raise your hand when pastor has an invitation? We need to be out and sharing, uh, and be sharing the gospel with others. You may not be good at it, but like I said, the Lord will take what you have and he'll, he'll use it. We need to brush up on sharing the gospel with others. I know I'm not very, very good at talking to people about that, but that's not, that's not an excuse. We need to go out and share the gospel with others. We have tracks on the back, in, the, in the back there that they get paid for and they get put out. How many times do we take those, put them in our pockets just for looks, and we take them home and they're sitting on our dresser? I mean, really. Or they're sitting in our cars and in the side, the side door. We go to the drive through at McDonald's, we'll give them our, our money, and that doesn't do them any good eternally, but you've got truth right there in your door. Why don't you go ahead and give that to them too? I mean, just some things to think about here. And Mark 16, verse 15. Let's turn over there real quick. I made reference to this earlier. It says, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're required to preach the gospel. It doesn't say if you get time and you feel like you should at this right moment, maybe you should preach the gospel or, or share your faith with somebody. No, it's a, it's a command. What Brother Ward used to say, or still does, uh, his last command should be our first concern. When we're going out and we're in a in the store, we shouldn't be seeing just people that are in our way. We should see souls for whom Christ died who are on the way to hell. We need to go out and, and have a burden for others. Uh, we'll look over at Romans chapter 10 real quick. It's my last, last passage here. Romans chapter, chapter 10 and verse 14. It says, How then shall I call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How are people going to call on somebody in whom they don't believe? And if you don't believe somebody's there and, and what, or if you don't believe that Jesus is there and you don't believe what he did for you on the cross, why would you believe in him? How are you going to hear about him unless somebody tells you about him. I mean, we hear preacher uh, preaching a lot about how Jesus died for us. We, we were told probably multiple times that Jesus died for us before we were saved. Um, we, need to, we need to be preachers to other people. We need to be patient with them and, and go and help them to understand that Jesus died for them as well. Our salvation doesn't depend on our works, right? I mean, we'd all say we're saved by faith. Uh, we're saved by grace through faith. Uh, it's not of works. Okay? It's, our salvation doesn't depend on our works. But other people's salvation depends on our works. If you don't go and tell other people about Jesus, how are they going to know about him? That's our responsibility. That's why Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Our salvation doesn't depend on our works, but others does. We need to be proactive about witnessing. We need to go out even when nobody else is around, when it's not convenient. We need to witness. And, not, and just don't be reactive, doing it whenever it, feels, whenever it feels good or when everybody else in church is going out. We need to be proactive in our witness. We need to be good witness for Christ.